moving on here to our universe. Um, I have a few questions for anybody watching. What do you know about our planet? You know, what is it that we understand about our universe? Did we know or do you know that there are Martian rocks or meteorites um, found in Antarctica or the Sahara Desert or that Jupiter has the biggest ocean, the biggest amount of, you know, amount, consumption of water. Um, that's the biggest planet as well, of course, but it's, it's, it has the largest amount of water um, for any planet in our solar system. Not even our planet has more water than Jupiter. We know now that even the smallest objects in space can have a moon. Which, you know, now that we know that information has completely changed our definition and our entire perception of what a planet is. You know, there are, there are planets out there or objects out there with, you know, several moons. And we, we know so much now. So what else is it that we've missed, right? If, we're, if we have always had information and we're constantly learning information, doesn't that make you think, what is it else that we have missed, right? What is it that I don't know about my universe? What is it that you don't know? Um, do you believe that we're all connected? Do you believe that this is all a farce? <laughs> well, I definitely encourage you to open your minds um, today as we dive into this topic of our universe and what it is that we really claim to know. There's a lot of funny stuff that's been going on. Um, February 2017, actually, um, they were speaking about, this is a quote taken from uh, Thomas Zurikin. He says, finding a second earth is not just a matter of if, but when. Um, and this is around the time that NASA had discovered seven Earth-sized planets that could possibly, you know, inhabit life. Um, they were detected using NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope while observing a tiny star called TRAPPIST-1, um, which actually these planets orbit around. This tiny little dwarf star, star it's actually called an ultra cool dwarf star and it has a surface temperature surface temperature much cooler than that of the sun still the star is so small and cold that the seven planets are temperate which means that they could have some liquid somewhere you know liquid water somewhere on the actual planet um and maybe life by extension right on the surface so we're making these assumptions because water naturally leads to life um, and it's about 40 years, um, light years, I'm sorry, 40 light years away from us, which is, you know, of course it seems like quite a distance. Um, but it's really not. When we consider the vast, vast, vast universe, it goes on forever. But that is interesting to me, right? We're, we're constantly finding new planets um, in areas that we weren't even looking for them. They were actually just observing this trappist, this tiny little dwarf star. And they're like, oh, wait a minute, there's seven gigantic planets orbiting it and that blew their minds of course because well, maybe not maybe in that moment because we've already had this information prior but it's still mind you know it's still mind bending when we really think about the fact that it's a dwarf star it's not even you know a big sun that we like that we you know orbit around which is the only way that we can perceive that other planets or life should exist right is you know it has to be big it has to be big but these little tiny stars are capable of having moons, they're capable of having planets orbiting them. And so what else does that mean? Is there life on those planets? Is there life on that dwarf star even? I don't know. It gets weirder and weirder, does it not? Um, also, another thing, I know that many of us have heard about the, um, well, people have been calling it a humanoid, but, you know, it doesn't seem to be too human. This, um, this was actually... A lot of the information can be found in the 2013 documentary uh, Sirius, where it was a team of researchers who studied a physical specimen that was obtained from Chile, um, specifically in the Atacama Desert. Now, the Atacama humanoid was about 13 centimeters, which is 16 inches um, in size. The body was desiccated, but it was completely intact, and the CAT scan one definitely proves um, that this is a living organism. It wasn't a hoax. It wasn't like a little figurine or something. They could actually see organs, lungs. They could see everything that was going on, his chest organs. There's absolutely no doubt that the specimen was actually real. Um, and this was confirmed by Dr. Nolan and Dr. Latch Latchman. 
at Stanford, the specimen had only 10 ribs, which is a finding that not yet found in humans. That's a little unusual. It also had an unusual cranium. Um, it's noted that the cranial vault, which um, the cranial vault is the space in the skull within the neurocranium. It's occupied by the brain. So his cranial vault was proportionally much larger than that's found in our, in our brains. He had a very large brain. Um, the bones are quite well developed and not those of a fetus, which is what we all thought when we first saw it. Like it's a little baby thing. <laughs> but after they looked into it very thoroughly, it couldn't have been a fetus. And importantly, it was mature. Um, you could see teeth. They had, it had mature teeth in its jawbone, um, a fracture in the right upper arm. It was seen in the concave fracture of the right post, um, posterior lateral skull that was in the back. And they believed that that was the cause of death, that he maybe suffered some kind of fracture or some kind of you know, damaging to the, to the back of his skull. Importantly, uh, Dr. Latchman had concluded that the humanoid is not any known deformity, genetic defective, um, skeletal dysplasia, or any other known human abnormality. It's definitely not human. However, the most startling conclusion to date was that Dr. Latchman concluded the humanoid lived to be about six to eight years in age. Crazy, right? Mind blowing. So, what does this all mean? Um, Recently, some scientists working on DNA and computer analysis found that DNA has been around for over 10 billion years, been here for a very long time. But Earth has been here for less than that, less than half of that time. Um, perhaps life, life is indeed universal. <laughs> and contact spreads from all over. That is... We have to think that way when we find stuff like this on our own planet. Like, how did this get here? Who brought it here or did it, did it come here on its own? You know, it makes you, it, it really takes you out of the perception of being a human and thinking that we're the only things in this world, you know? You really, we really have to learn to step out of that mindset and we have to start getting used to accepting and opening our minds to all these other things that are going on around us. Um, a JPL scientist once said that the objects found on and near Mars would show an ancient connection between ETs and humans and that that's why this information has been kept classified for so many years because the foundations of every fundamentalist orthodox belief system on earth would be, un would be upended. That's very interesting. And yes, I, I agree with what he's saying and I understand what he's saying. There would be a lot of people that would have issues, you know, if they found out they were connected to extraterrestrials or that aliens, you know, I don't know, gave birth to other, whatever crazy stories we have heard. But I mean, I say crazy because they're, they're, they're very, very far from what we've heard normally. But I don't even think they're that crazy. I don't even think, honestly, they're that far-fetched even. You know, we've heard a lot of different things that maybe question what we perceive to be true. But um, what I've learned in my 26 years on this earth is that one thing, nothing is new under the sun. <laughs> we will learn something new every single day. But trust me, it's been here for thousands of years prior to us. And just it's just a matter of us understanding it. So it's not like, not like we discover stuff. We observe, we detect, we, we learn. And that's, that's definitely something that I think all of us need to get into the mindset of really, really understanding. Like, we are very, very, very small creatures in this very, very big, big world. But we also have the power and the potential to be this big, big world. So it goes hand in hand, and I think it's a huge responsibility that we all have, is to hear these stories, look up the evidence, look, look further into it, and also be there to not necessarily just shun it away, first of all. I mean, sometimes maybe these things can be incorrect or inf um, evidence can be, I guess, you know, passed around in the wrong way. But I truly think that some of these stories, almost any story, holds some kind of, you know, credible weight to it. I think that we owe it to ourselves to look deeper, to look further within ourselves, further out into our universe, and once again, never stop believing. <laughs> never stop questioning what's going on because there's always going to be people, um, especially in our society, we have something called, you know, maybe an elite 
where you know we 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 basically rely on them to pass down the information we rely on these scientists to do their jobs correctly we rely on these scientists to tell us the truth so I really, really think that we have to be mindful of that. We have to be mindful of where the information is coming from and how it's being passed through. And also, don't be so judgmental and so hesitant um, off rip. I would say take our times with information because there's so much to learn. If we take our time with information, that gives us time to learn. You know, like whoever it was in Europe, you know, thousands of years ago that said the earth was flat when there were people in Africa who knew very well the earth was round. You know, it's just a matter of really doing your research. You know what I'm saying? So I would say keep on searching and definitely keep on believing. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am Vanessa. See you back soon.